Welcome to My Refrigerator. This is Megan Martins Hayworth, your host for Art Fridge Art History. Today we're going to be talking about the inspiration behind this magnet, Spokane's Garbage Goat. Hello and welcome to the second episode of Art Fridge Art History with Megan Martins Hayworth. Today we're going to be talking about the Garbage Goat, um, a Spokane landmark created by Sister Paula Mary Turnbull, who is also known as the Welding Nun. So, as we saw in the intro, we're going to be talking about um, the Garbage Eating Goat. I have this magnet designed by Chris Bovey, owner of, and creator of Vintage Print and Neon from Medical Lake Washington, and this magnet features a very famous Spokane artwork called the Garbage Goat. So we're going to launch off from here. Thank you, Chris. And this is the artwork that inspired Chris's design. This is called the Garbage Goat, again by Sister Paula Mary Turnbull, made in 1974. It is made of Corten steel with a vacuum inside of it, a vacuum tube, and behind it is a um, canister that holds the garbage. Surrounding it there are basalt columns and as you can see a button that you push to activate the vacuum. And this is located in Spokane's Riverfront Park right near another famous landmark called the Loof Carousel. Alright, so let's talk about the artist. I have a couple images here of Sister Paula Mary Turnbull the welding nun and we're going to talk a little bit about her life and her career and as an artist and um, this goat specifically. Okay, So Sister Paula was a sister of the Holy Names um, which had a convent here in Spokane, Washington and it um, is now closed but there are still some of her um, fellow nuns that are surviving. So hello if you're watching this episode everybody. Um, anyway, she has many famous, um, you know, really well known at least in Spokane, public artworks in Spokane, but also has secular and religious artworks all over the United States and Europe. Um, I mean we're talking states like Arizona, New York, um, <laughs> Washington State of course, and, and many others. And so we're going to talk about some of the pieces um, beside the goat that are in Spokane. For instance, she has um, a bear that she made for North Central High School, a Sasquatch that is located at Spokane Community College, and that is um, Spokane Community Colleges and Spokane Falls Community College's mascot. Okay, um, I have to give a shout out to the Sasquatch because I teach at Spokane Falls Community College. Anyway, she also did a memorial piece that is uh, at the wastewater treatment facility, um, a memorial for a worker who died there in a catastrophic tank collapse several years ago now. And a lot of you might have seen her sculpture of Anna and Alta Brown in Brown's edition. There are others in Spokane and all, like I said, all around the country, but most famous by far is her garbage goat. Okay. So um, another thing about her is that in 1981, she was designated the artist in residence at the convent of Holy Names before it was sold, for instance. And um, I actually was able to visit her studio. It was a beautiful studio um, on the grounds of Holy Names. And she also had a sculpture garden there um, full of sculptures, I think at least 10 of them. Um, anyway, uh, a beautiful studio. Um, Sister Paula was born in Seattle, Washington, and she grew up in the Alki Beach neighborhood of Seattle. Um, and during her younger years, she attended a number of prestigious schools um, for higher ed. And among those were uh, Siena Heights College in Michigan, <laughs> the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, Parsons School of Design, and the University of Washington. So she, she really pursued education. Um, she was also a teacher. Um, like I said, she was interested in education. She taught at several elementary schools um, 
and also ended up teaching art for 25 years at a private college called Fort Wright College until it closed in 1982. I believe she also served as the chairwoman at Fort Wright College's art department. Anyway, um, a little bit about her life as a nun. She was pronounced, uh, sorry, she pronounced her vows um, in 1941 and lived as a nun for 76 years. Um, she was a fairly unconventional nun, though, and I read <laughs> that one of her sisters retold a story about how she would ditch her um, traditional like heavy woolen habits. Um, I read that there were 10 yards of wool in these habits. And because she used a torch and, and welded, um, it, they basically were unsafe. So she just stopped wearing them. And I, according to the account I read, that was really forbidden. <laughs> but Sister Paula kind of marched to her own drum and, of course, made art and, and did it, she said, you know, for love of God. And so um, she really was quite a character. She passed away on July 20th in 2018 at 97 years old. And she was able to work in her studio almost up until the end. So um, she had a very long career as an artist. And like I said, her works are all over the place. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the garbage eating goat that is in Spokane's Riverfront Park today. As I mentioned, this goat was um, created for a very important Spokane event. And here is Sister Paula in her studio with the goat. And the goat was made for Expo 74 in Spokane. Um, and it was a World's Fair. Um, at that time, Spokane was the smallest city ever to have hosted a World's Fair, and it ran from May to October in 1974. This is a photograph that I got um, from the archives at, spoke, at the Spokesman Review of Sister Paula installing the goat and, and showing how you would put garbage basically up by its mouth, I think. Expo 74 had an ecological theme. It was The theme of it was celebrating tomorrow's fresh new environment. And that was kind of unique because in the history of World's Fairs, there was a lot of emphasis placed on like the newest technology and machines. And this expo kind of turned away from that and started focusing on environmental issues. So we're going to talk about how the goat ties into that a little bit. Um, Sister Paula was also part of the expo in that she was part of the committee that selected, I think it was 14 artworks for Riverfront Park. I think many or most of those are still there. Um, and so anyway, during her work for that, she was also commissioned by the Women's Council of the Spokane Board of Realtors in coordination with the City Parks Department to create an artwork um, for the expo. And she came up with this goat that ate garbage. I read somewhere that she said that she had seen these garbage cans at a zoo with animal heads and that people would just stuff their, their mouths full of garbage, right? And she was inspired then to make a whole animal, but she actually wanted the animal to kind of eat the garbage. So she created this vacuum that would suck up garbage. Okay, so the goat design... Um, now is in a grotto of kind of basalt columns. You can see them surrounding the goat there. And um, it's behind the famous Loof Carousel in Riverfront Park. And it has a vacuum that empties into that bin behind it, kind of a canister for trash. And um, during the expo, when it was first installed, there was a recording that went off as people approach the goat, and apparently it asked for people to put trash in the goat's mouth to feed the goat. And you would go up to the goat and push that button that you can see to the right of the goat, and it starts suction. And you can hear the suction come on, and it would gobble up your trash, right? <laughs> and it is really a delightful experience. I can't tell you how many times I've fed the goat. Um, but it charms young and old alike, and it's one of the most like shared universal and like beloved experiences of Spokaneites even today. Um, so this is an image of somebody, you know, feeding the goat. So you can kind of see how that would work. And it's about, it's, it's about life size for a goat. And so it has this kind of real charming character. 
Expo 74 brought 5.6 million people to Spokane. And most of those probably encountered this interactive litter-eating goat. Um, people commented how, how that corner of the park was the cleanest, right, of the expo grounds was the cleanest. And it encouraged people, because of its kind of fun, to pick up all the garbage they could find and dispose of it properly. Um, that idea, and we can see some images here that I found from Expo 74, I was only able to find one Slightly blurry picture of people actually standing there feeding the goat. Um, and you can see some of the other images from the American Pavilion and other artworks that were at the park. But anyway, the theme of it, the ecological theme of it, um, was a growing movement in the United States um, where people were very worried about pollution and, and the environment. Um, and there was this really famous national campaign to clean up litter. And this goat kind of ties into that because that's what it was encouraging people to do. And um, it was called Keep America Beautiful. And in 1971, which was just three years before the expo, there was this iconic and, and now lampooned commercial, um, an ad that featured a non-Native American dressed as a Native American um, crying over litter and pollution in the United States. But this was a famous campaign. And the goat was um, kind of in that mindset of, let's pick up after ourselves. So here's a goat, the goat picture of the goat um, as it looked during that those early years. Behind it, if you're familiar with Spokane, you can see the, the clock tower in the park. Okay, And um, it's amazing to me, but surprisingly, the garbage goat wasn't universally loved when it first opened. Um, and... We're going to talk a little bit about that controversy, okay? Um, so the controversy, who was upset, was the dairy goat farmers in the area. And it actually got um, bad press from dairy goat farmers. They protested the fact that the goat was shown eating garbage. That's kind of a stereotype of goats, I think we all know. That they'll eat anything, and and but the dairy farmers, uh, the gear, dairy goat farmers, sorry, um, said that it was um, degrading, debasing, and grossly misleading, and um, <laughs> and another said that it was offensive because because goats are actually very fastidious in their eating habits, and so they started protesting the goat, and there was a compromise reached. Okay, so the compromise was that next to the goat, and you can still see the basalt column, so it's just beside where the goat was, a sign was put up, and um, the sign basically described the dairy goat and, like, what they ate, <laughs> and also how much milk they could produce, and that they're, in fact, a very ecological animal. <laughs> and so um, that seemed to appease the protesters, and um, people, of course, also got to learn about goats. And I have here, what did Sister Paula say about all, all of it? And I saw a quote from her that said, it's a billy goat, not a dairy goat, which is kind of a wry response, and I kind of chuckle at it. But she was basically saying it's not even a dairy goat, so what's the big deal, I guess. Um, anyway, others defended the goat, um, and they said that it brought joy to people and that that area, like I said, of the expo grounds was actually the cleanest area. Somebody said with there was no garbage within a 50-yard radius of the goat, and that's probably because it is so fun to feed it, and so people would hunt down garbage. Um, to feed the goat. And this is true because I have myself have basically emptied my entire purse of receipts and other garbage just so everybody in my family can feed that goat when we're at the park. So um, it still has its kind of charm and that area of the park doesn't even have a stick or leaf on the ground because everybody wants to feed the goat something, right? Um, anyway, so in 2014, the year of the 40th anniversary of Expo 74, and of course, this goat, um, they held a birthday party for the goat. And it was festooned with a party hat and a garland of flowers, kind of like a champion racehorse. 
And Sister Paula was there, and she fed the goat a piece of birthday cake. It was quite a spectacle and a celebration of one of the most beloved, you know, landmarks in Spokane. Um, so it is a very um, beloved thing. And when the park closed down um, about six years ago for major renovations to things like the Louvre Carousel, they fenced off the goat for almost two years. And when the goat reopened, it made the news. Um, on May 4th, 2018, people could go back to the park and start um, feeding the goat again. It is a very iconic piece in Spokane, and I have here that it has so beloved that it's launched many spinoffs. If you do a simple Google search of Spokane's garbage goats, you get all kinds of um, products, basically, with the goat's image on it. It is that iconic. And I was just looking through some of these things that were made. Um, we can buy stickers. We can buy T-shirts. In fact, I have that T-shirt that you see here. Uh, all kinds of stickers for it. And, um, and you know, Iron Goat Brewing Company used it on their logo. And, and so it's a... a basically a symbol of Spokane civic pride. So I have myself purchased stickers, t-shirts, magnets, because it is my favorite piece of Spokane public art. Um, one of the very funnest tributes that I've seen of the goat was in 2018. There was this uh, gingerbread build-off um, during the Christmas season, the holiday season. And... Um, a local uh, bakery owner, um, the owner of Casual Friday Donuts, Lilac City Bakery and Celebrations Bakery, Amber Owens and a team um, got together and made this gingerbread goat. Okay, of course, and the theme of the uh, gingerbread build-off was um, historic Spokane landmarks, which I guess this counts as now. It was 40 years ago after all, or over 40 years ago now. Um, so the garbage goat was actually functional, this gingerbread one. They put a shop vac in its, <laughs> in its body, built Rice Krispie Treat structure kind of around it, and then covered it in, um, you know, chocolate icing and gingerbread. Um, to make it look just like the iconic goat in Riverfront Park. This goat was so, uh, this gingerbread build was so popular that it won the People's Choice Award. So it is uh, one of the most beloved public artworks in Spokane. Okay, so generations of Spokaneites and visitors have been charred by this quirky and whimsical garbage muncher. And Sister Paula's legacy will live on as future generations enjoy her public art piece. And so I wanted to give some thanks to this episode. Um, I want to thank you to, um, to my husband and historian, Malcolm Hayworth, um, Mary Stamp, the fig tree, who sent me articles on Sister Paula, and Karen Mobley, um, who gave me tons of information and who attended the 40th birthday, amongst other things, with Sister Paula. Um, the Spokesman Review um, was gave me the license to re, uh, show the reproductions of the, their photographs. And I also got information about the controversy from um, Clayton Hansen's article given here um, on the web. So, thank you for watching this episode of Art Fridge Art History. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, mostly to appease my daughter who really cares about this a lot. She asks me every day how many subscribers I have. So if you'll humor me, please subscribe. Thank you very much.